Example C in your text uh, brings up an interesting situation with calculating probability and permutations. And that is that usually what you do to calculate probability of something happening is to take the number of desired outcomes and divide it by the total number of outcomes and then multiply by 100 to get the percent of the desired outcome happening. But sometimes it's easier to calculate what shouldn't happen than it is to calculate what should happen. And that's really the situation here in this example. What's going on in this example is that there's a sort of like a county fair game where you throw darts at a dartboard. And I sketched in a sample of the dartboard down here on the bottom right. What happens is you throw three darts, and every time you hit a number, it stays. If you hit the same number again, they have you rethrow. And if you miss the board, you rethrow. So really what it means is you're going to get three numbers. And if those three numbers add up to be more than nine, you win. Well, to calculate the number of ways you could get more than nine would take quite a while because most of the ways to do it, you can get more than nine. I mean, most of the numbers here add up to be nine when you talk about any three of them. So instead of calculating all the ways you could get nine or more and taking that away from the total number, what we want to do is calculate the number of ways you shouldn't or you wouldn't get nine because that's much more limited. And really using one and two and three and just changing the order around, there's six possibilities, right? Or I mean, that, that gives you a total of six points. And there's five ways you can get one and two and three as the three points you get with your darts. I mean, maybe you get you throw and you get a number one first, and you throw the second dart and get a three, and the third dart and get a two. Or you start by throwing a two first, and so forth. So all those ways would only add up to six points, which is less than nine. Or you could throw a one, a two, and a four, and you get seven points or a 1, a 2, and a 5, and you get 8 points, or a 1, a 3, and a 4, and you get 8 points. So we only end up with 5 times 4, or 20 probabilities, 20 possibilities that are wrong. So 20 possibilities that are wrong. So then if we just take that total number of possibilities away from our total, we can calculate the possibilities of something actually happening that we do want to happen. So to do that, we just need to figure out what the total number of possibilities is, and that's your actual permutation calculation. We have 16 total numbers, and we're picking three. Now, you can use your uh, permutation formula, or actually there's sort of a shortcut, and that is that when you're doing a pick-choose problem, if you take the number of possibilities and you take this many, or the number of things you're choosing, of those numbers starting from the top and multiply them together, you get your answer. So in other words, if I start at 16, and I take 16 and 15 and 14, the first three numbers, and multiply them together, 16 times 15 times 14, I get uh, 3,360. So there's a total of 3,360 possibilities here. So your chances of losing the game are 4, 8, well actually you know what, there's 24 because each of these, these weren't actually listed with their direct numbers, so there's 24 ways to lose the game. So if we take our 24 ways of losing the game and divide it by the total number of ways to play the game, 3,360, 30, then we get a total or you know, a reduced 1 140th, which means that there's 139 140th ways to win the game, which is much, much easier. If you just run that through a calculator, 139 out of 140, you should get like 99.3. So you end up with about 99% chance of winning the game. And we figure that out by figuring out how many ways there are to lose the game because it was much easier.